Hi everybody, I want to bring another video to you on the Christian Adventure Course. It's the last video of the series. It's video number 10 and we call it The Time of Your Life. The Time of Your Life. And I want to just describe something to you. This may have occurred in your life. This may be an experience that you've had or it may not be. It's very hard for me to know. But sometimes people fall in love. They do. They fall in love. And um, when, when two people love one another, it's very normal, quite normal, for them to want to spend time together. In fact, if they don't spend time together, then the relationship probably will cool down. Um, but they share their deepest thoughts together. They share their secrets. They also share their problems. They're never far from each other's thoughts and they probably will contact each other a number of times during the day. And when they meet, they just enjoy each other's company and they find that being together is the main thing in their lives. They probably will have times of silence and quiet together, just enjoying the presence of each other. They're in love. OK, now all of what I've just described there could become true also of your personal friendship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about it. Think about it. The Christian life is being in love with Jesus. It's wanting to talk to him. It's listening and talking. Sometimes it's just being in his presence. It's being together. It's the time of your life. <clears throat> King David was one of many people recorded in the Bible who used to spend a lot of time alone with God. He says in Psalm 55, he says, I call to God and the Lord saves me. Evening and morning and at noon, I cry out in my distress and he hears my voice. Isn't that beautiful? Now, this psalm was composed at a time of great personal disappointment and deep sadness at the treachery of a close friend. But David, for many years, had learned to stay very close to God and to trust in him and to talk to him about everything. I'm going to suggest that when you get your Bible open later, that you have a look at Psalm 23. Have a look at the close relationship that David has with God. Read through the passage again and again and think about your relationship with Jesus that it might become like that. OK. When you read, have a look. What do you notice in the psalm about David's relationship with God and how often did David spend time with the Lord during the day? Right. Now, in prayer, we can talk to God and through his word, the Bible, he reveals himself to us. As with all relationship, relationships, don't let it become formal. Don't let it become formal. Otherwise, the formality of it soon spoils the personal aspect of it. You will nevertheless benefit from some structure to your special quiet time with God. So try various patterns or various models of quiet time. Now, I want to have a little bit of a talk about this concept of quiet time. A quiet time is just a time of quiet, OK, in which we spend time with God or which we spend time with the Lord Jesus every day, maybe two or three times a day. And there's no correct way to do it, but I'm going to give you some suggestions. First of all, find a place of solitude or near quiet for your special time with God. OK, and go for a long walk or just talk to the Lord as you go. Uh, by the way, don't shut your eyes. <laughs> you might bump into something. It says in Mark chapter one, verse 35, it says very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. So begin with prayer and read part of the Bible and let that prayer and Bible reading become like one thing, not like two divorce things, but like one thing. We, 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 we read a bit and pray about it and then we pray to, to understand what it means and it becomes one whole thing. 
prayer and reading together. Now, George Muller was a famous man of God from years gone by, and his way was to always pray on his knees uh, in his private room in front of an open Bible. George Whitfield was the same. He always prayed on his knees before an open Bible. He would read a it, pray about it, and he would pray about what he'd read. And his times of quiet with God were very important, especially in times of stress. So read a part of the Bible each day, making this the basis of your quiet time with God. Teach yourself to read larger portions. And if you can, take your time and uh, increase slowly. After some time, you might you might work up to a regular four chapters a day. At this level, you will read through the whole Bible quite easily in a year. Or if you're with the Home Bible College, then you follow the year one and the year two schedule for Bible reading. So let me ask you a few questions. How did Jesus find a place of quiet? He had an exceptionally busy life busy life. And how did George Miller pray? In a particular way, didn't he? How did he pray? How did he pray? Now, if you find any parts of the Bible hard to understand, check that you're reading from an easy to read modern translation like the New King James Version or the New International Version or even the Revised Standard Version. Make sure. Make a note of those things that you don't understand. And ask a Christian friend what he thinks it means. Find a verse or phrase that means something special to you every single day and make a note of it in a journal or a diary. And when you when you find something very special, we call it a password in the Home Bible College. When you find something really special, share it with somebody. Tell somebody about what it is that you're learning and what it is that's precious to you. Don't be surprised if they don't see it as precious. Don't worry about all that. Just tell them what it is that you're learning in the Bible every day and begin a prayer list. You know, it's just a simple thing, something that says on it, my friends or my family or other people, and you just put a list down. And then as you pray, ask the Lord to lead you to understand what you should be praying for for these people and use your imagination you might already understand what their situation is approximately but use your imagination have they been sick lately have they got any stresses lately any difficulties that you're aware of pray about that okay and tell the lord about all oh, what's on your heart for these people uh, in john in 1 john chapter 5 verse 14 we have a beautiful expression it says this is the assurance we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, prayer and Bible reading are the two main pillars of the Christian's life. OK, so what are you going to do when you find something difficult in the Bible? Well, you're going to make a note of it. Just make a note and you're going to ask somebody. What sort of things are you going to be able to pray for? What sort of people are you going to be able to pray for? There we are. Have a think about that. And lastly, are there any big issues that you need to bring before God in prayer right at the moment? Right. So we're going to look forward to speaking to you on some of the other courses that we have in the Home Papa College. This Christian Adventure course is just a beginning, just a start, and it will take you much further in the future so we look forward to catching up with you next time have a wonderful day and god bless you bye for now